tour starts here in the parking lot of a small church, the Friends Meeting House, in Madison, Wisconsin. Like most churches, it is occupied mainly on weekends, but what makes it special is that it generates electrical power all week long. A specially modified silicone material is vacuum deposited on a stainless steel substrate and encapsulated in weatherproof laminates. It is then applied to what we see here, a standard standing seam roof panel. The main contractor installer of the project discusses various details of the electrical interconnections between the individual standing seam solar roof panels. Let's hear from the electrician who wired it all together and connected it to the utility grid interface. And what this does in here, this, all this stuff comes through, and actually the, the get here, the back side of the house to that combiner box, they come all the way through here to the DC disconnect to the inverter. This inverter right now is telling us it's producing instantaneous 3,348 watts. And right now, at this voltage, it's a positive 148 and negative 146. So right now, our voltage is gonna be a little bit less because it's a little bit later in the year is uh, just about 300 volts. We've made 4,871 kilowatt hours since this thing was installed, and we've consumed 206 kilowatt hours. Transformer inside here that'll push up the voltage that we need to get to the utility voltage at 120. This has 120 volt output. So inside this big huge box right here is that big transformer that's, that uh, brings the voltage from 68 volts there to 120 volts here. And then it goes down to my AC disconnect and then uh, going through the meter right here. All this meter is doing is just telling me what this production so comes. Back, uh, come back out of here and go to the line side of this. So anything that the house is using still has to go through their meter. They're still being charged for it. This installation was sponsored by the local utility, Madison Gas and Electric. Let's listen to their report on the project. Uh, we ended up spending $40,561. Uh, we've measured 3,300 watts at the peak. And in, in a year, it made 3,790 kilowatt hours. The next stop on our tour is the Bear Residence in a local neighborhood not too far from Camp Randall Stadium. Here we have solar shingles an adaptation similar to the previous standing seam roof, but in this case applied in a standard lap shingle roof configuration. The energy conscious owner demonstrates the tremendous flexibility of the solar shingle panel. They are manufactured by Unisolar of Troy, Michigan. This particular unit has a potential of 17 watts and develops this power at approximately 12 volts DC. Catching up with the tour, we are now in the Bear Residence attic where we see the control unit and the contractor explaining some details of the installation. The control panel is basically an inverter which changes the 12 volt DC to the 120 AC needed to turn the power company's meter backwards. As the contractor closes up the panel on the photovoltaic roof system, we can summarize the project as costing about $20,000 and delivering approximately 50% of the power load at the Bear Residence. The last stop on the tour is the McKay Arboretum, a nearby extension of UW-Madison, where we see both a solar thermal demonstration and the new solar slate panel installation. Let's hear from Nels, the organizer of this tour, as he discusses some aspects of this unique solar photovoltaic roofing product. It's developed in Switzerland is they've, you know, they've developed a product that works in, given the European market, so they developed this what's called a sun slate. And it's actually, the backing here is some kind of man-made composite material, so it's not real true slate. Uh, but it has, I forget what it's, see this is a thing, single crystalline, I'm not sure. This is a single crystalline semen cell. So the company, Atlantis Energy, does not make the cell. They take a semen produced cell and mount it on this material. Nels continues to explain to the tour that this is one of the most expensive utilizations of PV materials. He feels that it's not cost effective if viewed strictly from a payback standpoint. However, if we place the installation outside of the cost benefit box, it provides a variety of interesting and desirable applications. Um, we've, we've got a customer base that's super involved in you know, renewable energy. Um, they fully funded a wind farm, which at the time it was built was the largest wind farm east of the Mississippi, you know, for small utilities like us. That was a, big feather in our cap and if they tell us they want solar we're going to build it so we're gearing up for that demand by doing these demonstration projects up to the customers
up to the customers. But that's that's why the wind farm is there. I mean, that was eleven million dollars, as you know, and it uh, wouldn't be there without customer demands. So. Uh, wind farm probably about ten cents a kilowatt hour. Usually about double. We're usually about a nickel. Wind is about twice as much. Um, solar's, should I say this, is about ten times as much. To summarize what we've learned here in Madison, we can appreciate that these photovoltaic designs integrate well with standard roofing materials. They are a very attractive addition as well as an interesting and unique way to generate electricity in your home or business.